this is problem 8.4 and we are being asked to find the minimum force P that is applied so that the crate lose equilibrium. So we have this crate is kind of tall in the sense that it's taller than wider so it may slip or may tip and we will do the analysis of both conditions. We are given the position of the center of gravity of the crate, which is right here. So let's start by doing the analysis, supposing, assuming that the crate slips. So we will assume that the impending motion occurs by slipping. So when we assume that the crate slips, we will assume that the friction force is equal to the friction force max, and that's equal to mu times n in this area. So let's do this free body diagram. We do our crate. Okay, so we draw our force P. We draw our weight, which is 250 pounds, and then we draw our normal force. Remember that the normal force do not have to be necessarily at the center because I am applying another force. Remember that the normal force is an equivalent force of a distributed force, and we do not know where that force is located. So. I can place it at any distance either from the center of the box, so I am placing it from a distant x from the center of the box, or I could measure x from the one extreme of the box. We can call this A and this B. Once I have drawn my free body diagram, I will do my equations of equilibrium, right? And I start by adding for, oh, for, of course I forgot the friction force, and what is the direction of the friction force? If I'm pushing the box in this direction, of the crate in this direction, I have to draw the friction force in this direction. So, Okay, so I am adding forces in X, and I find that P minus F is equal to zero. Then I add in my forces in Y, and I have that N minus weight is equal to zero. So here I have three unknowns because I don't I want to find P, I want I don't know N, I don't know F. But since I am assuming sleeping, I know that F is equal to mu times N. So I can say here that P is equal to F and that is equal to mu times N. And from here N is equal to the weight. So here very easy. I, can, I am able to find that N is equal to 250 pounds. Force P will be equal to mu 0 0.4 times 250. And then P is equal to 100 pounds. Now, how do we know that this is the minimum force that I can apply to produce motion of this crate? In order to prove that I did not tip before that, I will apply my third equation of equilibrium and I will calculate this distance x to see where that normal is located. So I will apply my moment at O and I will say, so the, the, the weight will not produce any moment because I am applying moment at this point O and then I have negative the height where the force is located times P plus X per times N, and N is 250. And P, I already found that 100 is 100. So this is equals to zero, therefore X is equals to 1.8 feet. So as you see, when P takes a value of 100, X takes a value of 1.8. But 1.8 is bigger than my 
create the half of the crate. So it means that for those conditions, the normal force is beyond the crate. So that does not make any sense. So what we see is that this force cannot be because I already move the normal force beyond my crate. So the maximum position where the normal force could be is at the corner. So we know that this is not a possible case. So this x equals 1.8 feet is greater than 1.5. So this does not make sense. Let's then assume, and I'm, I'm going to do it over here, tipping. And I will do my free body diagram of my crate, but now not assuming sleeping, but tipping. So the force goes in the same position, P, which is located at 4.5. Then I have the weight that also goes in the same position, which is 250. But now the difference between this free body diagram and this free body diagram is that I will put my normal force right here at the corner. So that means that the box is about to tip, so I, I am in impending motion, but in the verge of losing my equilibrium position by tipping. So this is no longer an unknown, but it's 1.5. Of course, I still have my friction force. Very important too, that now that I assume tipping, I know that x is equals to 1.5 feet, so that's my tipping condition, but I know that my friction force is less than mu times n. My friction force, I don't call it n, a, so it's just f, let me call it just f, to be consistent. So I am not in the sleeping condition. So now let's do our equations of equilibrium, and then we have that adding forces in x will have P minus F equals zero, adding forces in Y, I have that N minus weight is equals to zero. So from here, I can already say that P is equals to F. From here, I can say that N is equals to W, which is 250 pounds. So the normal force is still the same value. Now, F and N are not related because they are less than, but I don't know how much less. So I take moment at point O and I find that 1.5 N minus, and this distance over here is 4.5. So minus 4.5 P is equals to zero. From P here, is equals to 1.5 times 250 over 4.5. Value of P is now 83.3 pounds. So as you see, my force P is less than this one. It means that it tipped first because once I reach 83.3, the crack already tipped, so I was never able to reach a force of 100 pounds. And of course, we can calculate also F. F is equals to P, therefore F is equals to 83.3 pounds. And that's less than the mu times N that we already found, because the maximum was 100. So we already proved that the force F is less than the maximum, right, right here. And we already proved that having the normal force right at the corner leads me to a smaller force than trying to force the sleeping condition. So that's, this will be the answer.